Welcome to the second lecture of the series. Today we are going to be digging into some of the core math concepts uh, that you will need to understand mathematical analysis for casino games. This is more of a light refresher. Um, we aren't going to be digging too deeply into these concepts. So if you know these topics totally go over your head, if you don't feel like uh, you can catch up or understand what's going on here, um, then this course is probably not for you. So you know, consider this a make or break moment. So let's dig into the material. So probability. Before we start, we're going to have to understand what is a probability. You have definitely heard the term before. You have some intuitive idea of what it is. You turn on the weather channel or you look at your phone, you see there's a 25% chance of rain. You know intuitively there's a 50-50 chance of landing heads or tails if you flip a coin. So you have some intuitive sense of what that is. Mathematically speaking, what exactly is a probability? Well, we say that given an event X, whatever that event is, we assign it a value, a number between 0 and 1. This number tells us the likelihood of an event. So that is one aspect of a probability. It has to be a number between 0 and 1, and it's tied to a certain event. Our second aspect of a probability is that the sum of all events have to add up to 1. So those two conditions tied to an event gives us a probability. It's a number between 0 and 1, and the sum of all those probabilities will add up to 1. So going back to the coin example, we say a fair coin has a 50-50 chance of landing either heads or tails. These numbers tied to heads or tails, they're between 0 and 1. Both events, either one occurring, they add up to 1. So it's a little more abstract than how you might think of it intuitively. And I would agree with that. Instead of probability, I, I think it's more intuitive to think of odds. And odds are really just the same thing as a probability. If you're given a value P as a probability, then the odds are just the inverse of that value, 1 over P. And I find odds much easier to interpret. So we interpret odds as the number of trials it takes before an event will occur, or on average. How, how many trials do we need to do in order for a random event to occur? So going back to the coin flip example, on average, how long will it take before we flip heads? Well, heads, there's a 50% chance of heads. One over 50%, that's two. So on average, it'll take two flips before we see a heads. Sometimes we'll get it on the first flip. Sometimes it could take 10 flips, but on average, it'll take two flips. Next concept you'll need to understand is expected value. So let's go over the formal definition of expected value. So given an event X, we assign it some value. This can be any number. We say the expected value of a game is, is defined by the following formula. So e of x, the expected value of x, is the sum of the probabilities times the values. Intuitively, what does this mean? It's an average. An expected value is, is a broader definition of an average. Let's go back to our coin example. Where I let you play a game, and I'll pay you $10 if coin lands heads, and I'll pay you nothing if it lands tails. So we have our value function. The value of the heads is 10, the value of tails is 0. What is the expected value of this game? So we can just plug it into our formula. It's 50% chance times $10, plus another 50% chance of getting tails, and the $0 we get from that tails, that adds up to $5. Next concept we're going to take a look at is volatility. So before I go into the formulas for volatility, let's just understand intuitively what volatility 
is or how we interpret it. So I have chart here and starting at the left, this is the least volatile game you can play. Uh, this is an ATM machine. We don't really think of it as a game uh, because it's so predictable. And because it's predictable, that's what, that's what ensures that it has no volatility. Say an ATM has a $5 um, surcharge every time you use it and you want to withdraw $100, well, you're going to get $95 out. It has a predictable payout. Every $100 you put in, you're going to get $95 out. No change. Next on the volatility scale, gas prices. They change a little bit from day to day. They may change a lot over the course of a year. But, you know, day to day, you know, you, you take a look at, the, at those signs you drive by. They don't really change too much from day to day. So this is a little bit higher up on the volatility scale. And then if we move further along to the right here, we get to casino games. So these are a lot more volatile than the day-to-day -day change in prices for gas. And all the, you know, as high as we can go is lottery tickets. 999,000 times out of a million, you're not going to win anything out of a lottery ticket. But, you know, every once in a while, you, you'll get that million-dollar payout. So this is about as volatile as it gets. So how do we actually assign a numerical value to volatility? So we can understand it intuitively, but how can we get a formula for that? Or is there a formula for that? Well, I have two right here. There's variance and standard deviation. Variance is given by this formula over here. Um, and standard deviation is just the square root of variance. How do we interpret these formulas? Well, we could take a look at these, at this table of games I have set up over here. I have three games. Game one, I have a heads pays 10, tails pays zero. Game two, heads pays six, tails pays four. And in game three, heads and tails, they'll both pay out five. In each of these three examples, the expected value of these games is the same. In each case, you're going to be paid five units. Now, if we plug in these numbers into our variance formula, we're going to get this column over here. And then taking the square root, that's going to give us our standard deviation. If we pay attention closely, we'll see that standard deviation, it gives us the average distance between our outcomes and our expected value. So, Pay close attention to how st standard deviation is related to the possible outcomes and the expected value. In this first example, whether we get heads or tails, the distance between the outcome is going to be 5. That's what standard deviation tells us here. In this second example, the distance between the outcomes and the expected value is a distance of 1. In the final example, our outcome is going to be exactly the expected value each time. So we have a standard deviation of zero over here. Once you have an understanding of what expected value is, it's not much of a leap to understand the first new term you're going to learn um, that is essential to calculating casino, casino games. This is RTP. RTP is just the expected value of a game divided by the bet. It is a percentage. It's going to tell us, on average, for every dollar we put in, how much are we going to get back? Example, let's say a dice game. Doesn't matter the rules. We just know that on average, when we play the dice game, it's going to pay us $4. The game costs $5 to play. So, if we want to know the RTP, we just plug it into this formula over here to the right. $4 average payout, $5 average bet. It has an 80% RTP. Occasionally, you may hear the term hold percentage. Operators, such as casinos, uh, they tend to use this term more often, but it's really just the same thing as 
RTP just inverted. Hold is one minus RTP. We're not gonna use this term throughout the course, but just in case you encounter it out in the wild, uh, it's good, at, it's, you should know what it is. It's just one minus the RTP. So before we end this lecture, I have an assignment for you. It's a problem I want you to work through using the concepts we've learned in this mini lecture here. So I came up with a game for you to analyze, and it's a pretty simple dice game. So the rules of this game is you're, you're gonna roll a pair of dice, and whatever the value is that you roll, that's how much you're gonna be paid. It's that simple. So for example, if I roll a five and a six, that's an 11, I'm gonna get paid out $11. I want you to figure out what is the expected value of this game and I want you to figure out what bet size to ensure that I have an RTP of 87.5%. That's it. Simple game. Try to figure out the expected value and what bet will give me an 87.5% return. I would suggest using spreadsheet, a spreadsheet program to solve this. It'll make your life a lot easier. And I want you to get used to using spreadsheets to solve problems like this. Okay, so I am in Excel. Let's go ahead and solve this game. Let's take a look at all the events that could possibly happen. So we have two pairs of dice. For the first dice, I am going to make a column one through six, all the possible outcomes for that dice or die. Row here, all the possible outcomes for the second die. And let's look at all the possible outcomes that I can roll. All the possible outcomes. So this table gives us all the possible outcomes of rolling the two pairs of dice. We roll snake eyes, we get $2, and a pair of sixes gives us $12, and everything that could possibly happen in between. What is the probability of each of these outcomes? Well, each of these outcomes are evenly weighted. We have an equal chance of getting any one of these scenarios. And there are 36 potential scenarios that can occur. So let's put that in a separate table. And we'll fill out this table by reflecting the even weighting of the events that can occur. So this is the probability of each corresponding event. And notice, if you look here, all of these probabilities sum up to one, one of the conditions of a set of probabilities. Now we are in good position to figure out the expected value of our game. So to do that, we, what we want to do is we want to multiply the probabilities times the pays, each one, and add them up. And there is a handy function in Excel that will do this for us pretty easily. It's the sum product function. You're going to be using this function quite a lot in this course. So understand what it does and how to use it. We're going to take probabilities multiplied by the payoffs, add them all up. And our game has an expected value of $7. Figure out a bet size that'll give us this tar target return. So recall that RTP is equal to EV over bet. So just do the algebra and solve for bet. So bet size would be equal to expected value over our target RTP. So let's do that here. Expected value over RTP is eight. So if we charge $8 to play this game, we will get an RTP of 